Good afternoon. Today is March 11, 2015, and this is the house of Arthur Denchfield in Miami, Florida. And uh, this is an anniversary date. It was on March 11, 2011, that a, a 9.0 earthquake hit Japan, and it hit Japan according to a number right here. It hit Japan at uh, 2.46 p.m. That's the birthday of my brother, Alan O'Brien, who was born on the 26th of uh, February. And it was, uh, it was, uh, and he was born in 1946. So his number came out on the clock there in, in, in Tokyo. It's on the video. You can see 14.46. Uh, that's uh, 2.46 p.m. Anyway, we have in front of us a statue of Our Lady Fatima, and uh, the Sacred Heart of Jesus is behind Our Lady's statue, and fresh flowers there, yellow flowers. And to the right, to the right of the yellow flowers is a picture of the Ronald Reagans with my parents in a GOP fundraiser in Miami, 1979. And then way over to the right, at the moment of his holy resurrection, notwithstanding all the CNN garbage about uh, the, the Shroud of Turin, I mean, CNN did some good things, but they also, they did what is very typical, and that is they introduced doubt. And that's what Protestantism is all about, is to, is to introduce doubt into the faith of those who believe. This is the holy face of Jesus from the Holy Shrine of Turin at the moment of his holy resurrection. And underneath is a color photo of Our Lady Fatima's International Pilgrim Virgin Statue uh, that wept in New Orleans in 1972, and that photo was taken at the Brazilian Society for the Defense of Tradition and Family Property headquarters in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 1973. And that statue, uh, which was in the, uh, I believe the Blarie was in charge of the statue at the time, went, was taken to visit Plinio Correa de Oliveira, whose photo is behind the golden lion rampant on the red field symbol that he created in 1960. And it was the Brazilian TFP that mobilized Brazilian public opinion against communism's takeover of Brazil. And it was a four-year effort. And in 1964, Jean Goulart got on a plane and fled. And we pray and hope that Obama will do the same thing soon, voluntarily. Anyway, that's something we have to pray about. Because he's a communist, he's a socialist, he's a Muslim, and he was born, he wasn't even born in America, he was born in Kenya, Africa. And you people in the media, you know this, and you won't tell us the truth. Shame on you. Anyway, um, getting back to the matter at hand, today was also the day, the 11th of March, uh, 2011, that, uh, that uh, Palm Beach Society Dame Celia Lipton Ferris passed away. She was one of the most extraordinary uh, uh, dames, ladies uh, of society ever in the history of Palm Beach, and uh, the balls that she uh, administered every year raised millions of dollars uh, to, to fight cancer and other such illnesses that are plaguing people in, in, in many parts of the world. And so we ask, we ask for your prayers for Celia Lipton Ferris. Her, she had been married to uh, an inventor, Victor Ferris. He died before her. He, was inv he invented many things, including things had to do with the uh, U.S. Navy's uh, uh, nuclear submarine. Anyway, we're going to ask God, Almighty, Almighty God now, briefly, to symbolically, I'm going to shake up the world and I ask God to shake up the world accordingly. We're shaking up Oceania, Asia, the Middle East, Africa, Europe, South Central and North America, the Caribbean, Hawaii, the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, all the lakes and all the, all the valleys and all the rivers and all the deserts and all the mountains, but especially the cities, the cities where such evils as abortion, divorce on demand, pornography, and same-sex marriage have been legal, been, been made legal by the local, state, and federal governments. That's a sign that you're going to get hit. If those evils exist where you live, head for the hills as soon as you can, because the tsunamis are coming quickly. The mega tsunami that happened today on March 11, 2011 over there in Japan, 
happened after the 9.0 earthquake struck Sendai and so on, and that was a warning from God. Again, we've talked to you about this, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You've seen this, the stories. If you want to see, uh, I mean, the numbers are there for those who are interested, but I, most people are not interested in those kind of things anymore, and that's too bad. Even those who work for the federal government and get $100,000 a year, and they work in intelligence, they could care less about prophecies, about prophets, even those who are authentic. Who have a track record? Oh, we come on! You can't prove it to us, so we don't, we don't believe. That's too bad. Again, uh, this is Charlemagne. We've talked to you about that. Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne was crowned emperor on Christmas Day, the year 800, and a relative of his was made bishop in 742 A.D., and that re relative, his name is St. Crotigang, and he died, he, di he died in, in um, he died on the 6th of March. Let me see if I have this lined up right. He died on the 6th of March, 766, and it just so happens that that um, a good friend of mine, Nelson Fragelli, he's the one who introduced me to the TFP in December of 1971 here in Miami uh, through Mr. Robert Bergen, who is the founder and director of Fado International, and Mr. Uh, Nelson Ribeiro for Jelly happened to be coming to Miami and he showed me a video and that's all it took. I saw the video of Tradition Family Property and I, I understood many truths in that video and so uh, with God's help I made my way down to Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil and And met Mr. Met Dr. Plinio Correa de Oliveira, whose picture you see behind me there. And along with uh, with uh, goodness, all these alarms are going off. This is one of the one of the downsides of having all these electronics uh, around one. Um, anyway, it was uh, met. I met a California-born. Uh, U.S. Army veteran, Tim Allen Reese from San Pedro, California. He came to Sao Paulo more or less the same time I did from uh, Miami, Florida, although at that time I lived in Coral Gables, 3601 Durango Street. That's my number. I was born 36, son number one, 3601, and uh, that was the number of my battalion. Uh, uh, my, yes, my, my platoon in the 3rd Battalion was, was platoon 3006 in Paris Island, um, South Carolina. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, there's so many similarities. They're not coincidences. I mean, it's like God is trying to tell me something. Just be good, be faithful, and I'm, I'm blessing you, and I'm confirming what you're doing by all these so-called coincidences. Anyway... It was after meeting Dr. Plinio Cudeli Veda, the founder of the first TFP, that I came back to the States, and Tim Allen Reese, and a number of, and then some uh, friends in New York. We all got together in New York, and we started what later became the American Society for the Defense of Tradition Family Property. And the original publisher, editor of Crusade, Crusade for Christian Civilization magazine was John Hart, who's in heaven watching right now. He died some years ago. But uh, the, the, the TFPs, Tradition Family Property, I mean, that's one of several organizations that Plenio Cordero de Vida uh, has inspired. Um, America Needs Fatima, Tradition in Action, .org, and so on and so forth. 
And but what, right, what, what we want to ask you to do is to pray for this. This has not been done yet. The whole, this was an apparition in Tui, Spain. This happened on June 13, 1929. The Holy Trinity and Our Lady Fatima asked that the Holy Father consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and that there would be world peace. Eight popes, including Francis, have disobeyed God. If they didn't do it, they'd disobey them. I'm sorry. And yet, you know, two of them are supposedly canonized. How's that possible? How's it possible to canonize a pope who disobeyed God? That's why we have to pray. We have to pray that Almighty God raise a holy pope. And I, if, if God wants a layman to be a pope, I know it's just a man. It's not me. It's the man who was born the same day I was. Nelson Ribeiro Fragelli. He's been a faithful member of the, of the Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, and Property for the last 50 years, I believe. And uh, he's, he's a true Catholic traditionalist, and he speaks fluent, not just uh, superficially, but he speaks fluent German, Italian, French, English, Spanish, Portuguese. And maybe he, he learned another language or two since I, I saw him last in Rome in 1982. Uh, I, I spent some time there with a, with a group in Rome and then ca came back to my mom who was sick. My dad had already died. And so I spent the rest of the years of my mother taking care of her. And then she t passed on in the year 2002. And uh, we've been living here s since 2000 in this house and so on. It's a long story. Uh, your prayers are always uh, appreciated. Anyway, the, the earthquake, the 9.0 earthquake in Japan today, four years ago, was an extremely important warning. And the following tsunami, mega tsunami, we, we've warned you about the possibility of the Cumbre Vieja volcano in Las Palmas collapsing into the ocean and coming over and, and, and with a wall of water anywhere from 60 to 100 feet tall, uh, hitting the entire east coast of the United States and the east coast of South America, the northeast coast of South America, and that would include Venezuela. Venezuela, Colombia, the, the Guianas, and of course uh, uh, the Caribbean would be underwater, and uh, 360.com, Caribbean360.com has, has, has published an article, I believe it was in May of last year, about this tsunami threat. It's the worst threat that they, they face in their history. The, the, the Caribbean region. I mean, if the scientists are correct, the, the waves could come over there with 100 feet tall. And, and, and you liberal politicians and you liberal uh, reporters are making this possible. Because you're not telling the truth. You're not obeying God. You're not sticking with the plan that heaven has for us. Instead, you are misleading the people. And, and the American people have become the American sheeple. And I've, time and again, I've gotten up and I've challenged the admirals and the generals and the U.S. military to get off their rear ends and save this country, defend the U.S. Constitution. I mean, that's your moral obligation. You took an oath, just like I did when I entered the Marine Corps, an oath to defend the Constitution from enemies, domestic and foreign. And we have in the White House a Kenya-born usurper who's a Muslim and a communist, a socialist, a pretender, and he lied his way into the White House just like Hillary Clinton's trying to lie her way into the White House too. And Democrats and communists, they united years ago. That's why I call them Democrats, but someone else calls them Democrats. They should be made illegal. The Communist Party should be illegal as, and the Democratic Party should also be illegal now because it's anti-American. It's out to destroy America. Not all Democrats are bad, but many are. And now this amnesty business with giving 5 million immigrants the vote. It's, of course, you have to vote Democratic. You can't vote Republican. Oh, no, you can't do that. And that's it. That's like the, the death knell. And it's outrageous. It can be prevented. Uh, but no, those who can do something about it militarily will not. Those who can do something about it rhetorically, I mean with rhetoric and re with books, they have excellent books. David Limbaugh wrote a book called The Great Destroyer. Michelle Malkin, Culture of Corruption. 
Uh, Ann Coulter's written a number of books. I mean, there have been extraordinary exposés. Uh, Monica Crowley, what the blankety blank just happened? On and on it goes. All the books, all the articles by Sean Hannity, by Bill O'Reilly, and, and Fox News Channel, Newsmax TV, Newsmax Magazine, WorldNetDaily.com. I mean, so many people are well informed, and yet the evil continues. Abortion continues to be legal in this country. And some 56 to maybe it's 58 million unborn Americans have been murdered. All over the world, over a billion and three quarters have been murdered legally. And God loves us. And he's, he, he doesn't look at that lightly at all. And so that's my second alarm. I have to go uh, again. You have to read this book by Lorna Byrne, Angels in My Hair. She has an account on Twitter, and it's an extraordinary book. And also, I recommend another book that I bought at Goodwill. It's Dr. Dwayne, Wayne Dyer's book, Excuses Be Gone. Dr. Wayne Dyer is a man, is the doctor who uh, made the story of Immaculate Iligabisa known to the world. Encouraged her to write her, her, her story, left to tell, about the Rwandan Holocaust, which happened in President Clinton's watch. A million Tutsis were murdered in a hundred days by Hutus. Black on black crime in Africa. A million Tutsis were murdered by machete, mostly by machete. Uh, many of those machetes were imported from Red China. And, and, and it happened on the watch of President Clinton and Susan Rice, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., and she totally ignored it. She knew what was going on. Stand down, stand down, don't do anything, don't do anything. And that's what happened with Benghazi, too, right here. That's morning. Four Americans murdered in Benghazi because Valerie Jarrett said, stand down, stand down to the military who were ready to rescue those Americans. What kind of a country has this become? I mean, really now. It's outrageous. I have to go. I mean, that's the alarm again. Uh, Nelson Forgelli, it was good to see to see you, your, your, your video on St. Chapelle. I was so impressed with what I saw at St. Chapelle when I visited St. Chapelle with you and the French Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, and Property during Christmas of 1980. I lived in Europe for two and a half years, and in 1980 I went from Denmark uh, to Paris, and I spent my Christmas with the French TFP, and I saw St. Chapelle and some other important religious places. And what impressed me the most of St. Chapelle, besides all the things that are obvious, was one stained glass window with Jesus Christ with a sword between his teeth. Like that. When I saw that, I said, this, this is the God I serve, Christ the King, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the warrior of warriors. And that's why we ask our Lord and we ask Our Lady and we ask Charlemagne to inspire the U.S. military to stand up right now and vacate the White House of all the communists and the socialists and the Muslim Brotherhood types and all the anti-white racists that are destroying America. As, as I said again, I'm not a racist. I took the name of a black man for my confirmation name, Martin DePores, and there's Pierre Toussaint of Haiti. He's about to be canonized. But there are anti-white black racists like Holder and Obama and Susan Rice and Valerie Jarrett who are destroying America. And it has to stop. And that's it.